Welcome to Corel Painter Sergeant vs. Master Course, an in-depth series where we will learn about the Sergeant vs. tool set and how to apply them on different subjects such as still life, portraiture, architecture and landscapes. Our classes will have a gradual level of complexity, from simple sketching to more advanced techniques. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced artist, you are welcome to stay with us. We believe there is something for everyone in this course. It's good to see you again. Now that you have had an overview of the tools we will use for our course and you know how they behave on abstract brush strokes, let's bring them to work. Throughout this entire course, we will explore a spectrum of realism from graphical representations to something finer, leaning towards photorealism. In the second class, we will explore three simple free sketching techniques, and these are great for warm-ups and pre-studies. Our subject, apples. Their shape is simple to understand, they have beautiful colors, and they are perfect for us to exercise, reading and representing shapes overlapping colors, blending colors, and painting on impulse or freely. Exercise 1. The Sergeant Brush I have different techniques for the same brush, anything from sketchy, graphical approach to a finer, more photorealistic technique. This is a highly versatile tool. However, in the simple sketching technique, we are going towards something more graphic. I will explain to you the basic mechanics behind it. It is centered on dabbing. It will be like painting the illusion of gradients by applying lots of dots. The main brush stroke styles I apply here are 1. I fill in a basic shape, deciding for one main color. I normally recommend you to pick up a perceived color that you see as dominant in an object you want to paint. 2. I lower the resaturation and fill in the large areas with larger and longer brush strokes. Three, I work the color variations with dabbing tiny strokes in a small size brush. Note on large strokes that in low resaturation the start point has more transparency, while the ending point, once you drag the stroke, it has more intensity on a color you are applying. You need to take that into account when you are going from one color to another, choosing the direction of your brush stroke so you give the illusion of a gradient. The same thing happens on a dabbing of super short dot-like strokes. Let's see how that works in action. These are some apples I took several snapshots of with my mobile phone so we could do these studies. I did a quick color correction so they could look closer to what we see in real life. Take a print screen. Now, if you want to do drawing before you paint, that's fine. I personally prefer not to. I have one important rule about the colors and lighting for this particular set of exercises and that is, I just want you to go free and not think about any particular order or way of doing that. So just go in any direction that your intuition or your guts tell you to. Any colors or shapes you perceive are great, I want you to own your decisions. It's not about doing it in the right way in this second class, it's about allowing yourself through a free discovery process. And here's what uh, my process looked like.
Exercise 2. The blocky background brush. Now we will go to a brush that makes everything look soft. The colors look overall very luminous. On the previous brush, the dabbing flow was fast paced, but on this one we will go slow with longer, softer brush strokes. It is centered on a mix of smudging and glazing. The main brush stroke styles I apply here are 1. I fill in a basic shape, deciding for one main color. And I recommend you to pick a perceived color that you see dominant in your object. In this case, the applying color can be sparse and we see the underlying white canvas. But don't worry, because we will apply new brush strokes during the process so we form density. 2. High or low resaturation won't matter, so use any. 3. Form gradients by applying gentle, longer, slower brush strokes, keeping in mind that the start of a stroke will smudge the underlying color a bit and the soft pen pressure will allow for glazing. You get more luminous colors if you paint over a white canvas. You can get denser, darker colors if you apply it over darker values. Take a print screen. If you want to do a drawing before you paint, that's fine. You know, I personally prefer not to. And now you see how my process went. Remember, no rules for the colors and lighting for this second class, so just go free, start and proceed anywhere. Exercise 3. Speckle Grainy Hard Drip Now that you have been through dabbing, smudging, glazing, so let's go blending colors directly as we paint. The main brush stroke styles I apply here are 1. I fill in the basic shape, deciding for one main color. See the dominant color in the object you want to paint. 2. Longer or wider strokes in lower saturation for the main gradients. The start point of a stroke in low resaturation will carry on the blending of the underneath color while the end point will have a denser concentration of the color you are applying. 3. Dabbing for blending smaller patches of variations of colors. The lower the resaturation, the bigger the blender effect. Slightly higher resaturation for applying denser colors. 
Now you get to see my process, where the only constant is that I need to have my basic shape. All the rest goes without any particular other for this um, exercise in our second class. Further considerations on our other brushes. I particularly find um, oily water and drippy jellyfish great brushes to be used for more complex techniques. In the case of oily water, I prefer to use it as a mix of layering and glazing across several layers. And drippy jellyfish, it has great advantages when coupled with other brushes. But these are things we are going to see on later classes. The simplest sketching techniques you can use these two brushes are simply applying a brush stroke atop each other on full resaturation. Oily water, when used in this manner, is very similar to a common use of pastels. The colors tend to be denser and darker than what you pick in a color wheel and they tend to look more opaque, so you can compensate for that. Drippy Jellyfish, which by the way, I love the funny name, as mentioned in our introductory class. It is like painting with three values within each brush stroke. So you get some interesting aberrations while painting. That can slightly change according to the direction of your brush stroke, so experiment with it. The colors work also as darker, desaturated and a bit more luminous with a metallic edge. And for a simple technique with a real soft bristle, you can apply the exact same brush mechanics as for the speckled grainy hard drip. And that is because they behave very similarly in, and the main differences are that here the colors are a tad darker, denser, and they blend a bit less as if the paint is on a process of drying. And you can see the bristles when you apply paint with a smaller brush size. Regarding grainy pressure knife and the liquid ink sketcher, I don't think they fit for this class of simple free sketching, but later on we will see some use for them. So we have come to the end of our second class and you have put into action, at your own pace and direction, three different painting techniques. You have learned the basic brush mechanics behind each of them and now you can start applying these to your new artworks. 
On our next class, you will learn to break down color, lighting and shape into organized, manageable parts to work on any subject, from simple to complex. Thank you so much for watching. Corel Painter and I hope that this class has been helpful to you. Stay creative, stay positive and inspired.